Now, Leon Rose had also spoke on Tom Thibodeau, which he finds himself in a very unique circumstance with Tibbs because they have a long history together. And the position that Leon Rose is in right now, in which certain moves ain't work out, like the Kimball Walker, and just them having kind of a plethora of young players on the roster, they may have to go through a slow development phase in order to get good. And then when there's an opportunity to make a trade, perhaps for a disgruntled superstar, then they can make that move. But he's going to have to ask himself, is Tibbs going to be the right guy to have to develop young guys, especially to give them plenty of burn on the floor to make sure that they have enough experience? Because Tibbs don't really have the history of doing that. This situation almost reminds me of when you see the rappers, they hire their best friends as security. And then when they go out, they wonder why things tend to happen because your homeboy, just like you, you just came out of the club. Y'all both lit, but he's supposed to be your security. You love him. That's your boy. But he clearly can't do the job. He's not fit to do the job right now. The same scenario might go for Tibbs. Leon Rose might have a long history of a personal relationship with him. But right now, the fact that there's barely any free agents to go get, the team can't just win off rip right away. You can't build it that way. We're going to have to go through a slow process of just kind of developing and rebuilding. Is Tibbs the right guy to have? Once again, this situation reminds me of the rapper that has his homeboy as security. I'm like, damn, they both just stepped out the club lit. And this is supposed to be his security. Even though the rapper's homeboy may be built up and look scary and look like he could do the security job. But the fact that he can't control himself around all the liquor and women, he's just not the right fit for the current situation. So adjustments should be made, but that might end up being your ass. And the same thing would apply here with Tibbs. If they're going to have to go young for a while, he's going to have to look at Tibbs. And if Tibbs ain't the right fit and he takes too long to make adjustments, he might just end up being on the chopping block. But Leon Rose, just like the rapper, he still gives his homeboy a vote of confidence to do the job. As far as, uh, as Tibbs' performance goes, I mean, again, he's you know one of the best coaches in the nba um obviously none of us are happy with the results this year um but uh he's a guy who you know prepares our team better than better than anybody um and uh you know i feel that he's done a good job under the circumstances now a good follow-up question to that would be what are the circumstances in his eyes that he views that tibbs is under because right there, Leon would then have to acknowledge the slip up at point guard that the Knicks are lacking. And it's leading up to Tibbs having to struggle to balance and juggle his rotations. And also, it's leading to a lot of struggles for Julius Randle because he's not getting the ball in his position. He's getting the ball at the top of the key at the three point line. But moving along, right after this clip of Leon Rose speaking about Tibbs aired, Mike Breen and Walt Clive Frazier actually spoke about some of the loud noise that's being made about Tibbs' reputation about playing young guys. Once again, this is proof of the acknowledgement of a lot of the online noise that's being made about Tibbs and certain things coming from the fan base. Leon Rose, a private man, has to go from dealing with the NBA on the back end side where he normally doesn't have to hear from the consumers to now be in front facing where his job results gets direct feedback from the NBA consumers, AKA the fans. That's going to be something completely new to him. Tom had the reputation for not playing younger players. It was very inflexible, but we saw that flexibility this season. Well, Quentin Grimes became part of the rotation before a couple of times his progress was halted because of various things. And meanwhile, now you're seeing these guys like topping it quickly get a lot of time. And some want to see even more time for the younger players. Right. But I've had so many coaches, and UB Brown has, has always talked about this. It's hard to question coaches' rotations when you're not at practice every day and seeing what the guys are doing. And when you know you know what the, the sets both offensive and defensive are, and you know who's made the mistake. Mike Breen is right about us not being at the practices, but there are a couple of contradictions in this whole scenario because Leon Rose then talks about building the team the right way, taking their time on decision makings as far as trades, etc. 
and the team having a lot of draft picks. I believe he said we had 13 draft picks over the next three years, including four first round picks. And then we already have a lot of young guys on the roster. So these things adding up with Tibbs, it doesn't really make any sense. Building the slow way, especially with a coach that's stubborn playing young guys and just having more pieces to add more young guys to the team. So it continues to make us ask ourselves, is rebuilding in a slow way even possible with Tibbs as your head coach? Especially with the vote of confidence Leon Rose gave to Tibbs earlier in the interview. One of the questions I asked him was, when he first took over, he said he was going to build it the right way, be pragmatic in his approach. We asked him after a rough season like that, will they keep that same mindset? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we have to stick to the plan. We have to take it one step, build one block at a time, be patient. We feel like we're set up, you know, really well as far as like we've got 13 draft picks over the next three drafts, uh, four first round picks. And uh, with regard to opportunities that may come along, we feel like we're very flexible and able to do that. But again, we want to show patience. We want to show prudence, you know, in making those decisions and continuing to develop what we have. I'm telling you, all them injuries at the end of the season, they actually showed a proof of concept with playing the younger guys. The fan base saw quickly getting triple doubles. We seen Obi having 30 point games, then a 42 point game. That kind of threw a monkey wrench on the public perception of Tibbs, as now a lot of the fans, they're going to double down on their stance that Tibbs is very stubborn to play the younger guys. After seeing the proof of concept at the end of the season, seeing guys like Obi and quickly flourish. But Leon Rose also touched base on how some of the young guys took advantage of this year's minutes, but also pay attention to how he matches up Julius Randle's timeline with some of the younger guys. Which I always tell you guys, Julius Randle is part of the plan going forward, but I'll break down why later on in the show. These guys have gotten an opportunity and taken advantage of it. And, you know, for us, that is, that's very exciting. I mean, Jericho going against starting centers, the 58th pick in the draft. Uh, Obi, the last, you know, week or so has just, you know, taken it to another level, scoring a career high 35 last game. Um, Quentin, who, you know, had already established himself in the rotation. Deuce getting minutes uh, and doing a good job with it. Quick playing point guard and showing some great signs. And, you know, RJ, we forget RJ is only 21 years old. We have nine players on our team that are 24 years old or younger. And, um, you know, and Julius is only 27. So, you know, all those things take, you know, that we look at that like, you know, development is key. And this, this part, since this part of the season, we've seen some good development and we just need to work and continue on and build on that. Nine plays out of 15 is under the age of 24. And just hearing Leon Rose talk about development at this point of the season, you see their hand was forced now to start playing the younger guys more minutes with Julius being out, RJ being out, you know, Cam Reddish getting hurt. The lineup started getting depleted a little bit. Now they're forced to play the young guys. And even though half the team is under the age of 24, it still doesn't seem like developing the younger guys was ever a priority. See, this is where it, this is where it's hard to take Leon Rose serious right here. But due to the fact that half your roster is young and then you have 13 more draft picks for the next three years and just a depleted free agency once again, you're going to have no choice but to develop. It's looking like that's the more likely way this team is going to take. Unless they're willing to blow everything up, get rid of all these draft picks, end up losing some key players, including RJ. If guys want to go after Donovan Mitchell, RJ will be gone. That will be part of the package. And I don't think it's worth that.